على سيدنا محمد النبي عدد نبات الأرض Al-Hamdulillahirrabbilalamin <coughs> All praises are due to Allah, Lord of the universes. Bismillah rahman rahim To Him belongs whatever is in the heavens and on earth. And He is the sublime, the tremendous. The heavens might almost break apart above them while the angels celebrate the praises of their Lord and ask forgiveness for those on earth. Behold, He is Allah, the most forgiving, the most merciful. May all peace and blessings be upon the Imam of the Messengers, 
the Sultan of the Prophets, the Master of the First and the Last, the Beloved of the Lord of the Two Easts and the Two Wests, the Grandfather of Hassan and Hussein, Sayyidina Muhammad And may peace and blessings be upon his noble family and blessed companions, especially upon the four Khulafa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar Farooq, Hazrat Usman Al Ghani, and Hazrat Ali Al Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. Ya Yuhal Mu'minun, O believers, Alhamdulillah, all praises are due to Allah that we are in the holy month of Ramadan, the month that the heavens and the earth are honoring and rejoicing about. Ghawsul Azam, Shaykh Abdul Qadir Gailani Qadas al is giving salams to this month, saying, Salaamu Alaikum, O month of fasting. Salaamu Alaikum, O month of standing in the night of prayer. Salaamu Alaikum, O month of Iman. Salaamu Alaikum, O month of the Quran. Salaamu Alaikum, O month of radiant lights. Salaamu Alaikum, O month of forgiveness and pardon. Salaamu Alaikum, O month of the rising steps of paradise and safety from the descending steps of hellfire. Salaamu Alaikum, O month of the worshipping servants. Salaamu Alaikum, O month of those with spiritual knowledge. Salaamu Alaikum, O month of safety and security. You are a prison for disobedient sinners. You are a place of comfort for the good servants. Peace be upon the lamps and lanterns that shine so bright. Peace be upon the sleepless eyes and upon the streaming faces. Peace be upon the illuminated mihrabs in the masjids and upon the tears that are spilled and shed. Peace be upon the sighs that arise from the hearts that are burning with ashk. O believers, the awliya Allah are giving us a sign of how precious this month is and how we should be spending this month. One third of the month is finishing. In a very short time it will be the middle of the month and we will be seeing Ramazan moving to leave us in the same way it came upon us. We don't have any guarantee of life to reach to the next Ramazan. So we should not waste our breath of life in this Ramazan. Our Shaykh, Sahib al Saif, Shaykh Abdul Karim al Kibrisi Rabbani is saying, The holy month of Ramazan, it is a blessing. It is a blessing to the believers. Yes, it is a curse to the unbelievers. Separating, separating between believers and unbelievers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, holy prophet is saying to us, The beginning of the month is Rahmat, the middle of the month is Ma'rifat. And the end of the month is escaping, opening door and escaping from Jahannam, safety from Jahannam. So yes, we are on the edge of finishing the days of mercy and of entering into the days of forgiveness. But what are we asking for? Today's believers, they forgot how to ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how to make dua, to make it simple. 21st century Muslims are asking dua only for themselves only for their own dunya, only for their hawa, their desires, only for their own families. Not asking for ahirat, not understanding what it means to prepare for ahirat, not asking for help and protection against the ego, against shaitan, against dunya and against your desires, not asking for help for the entire ummah, not asking for the help of Allah. Not asking for the help of Allah by moving closer to those who are beloved to Allah, the prophets and the awliya Allah. Just asking for enough food to keep their bellies full, for a big house and for a long life to enjoy. And they say, well, the hadith is telling us to ask for the best of the dunya and the best of ahirat. And because they become so in love with dunya, they think that the best of the dunya is what shaitan is advertising not what the Holy Prophet والسلام, is teaching. Because the Prophet والسلام, taught us what is the best of the dunya when he said, the best risk is that which is enough. Once the Sahabis were sitting with the Holy Prophet and mentioned the dunya, 
He والسلام, said to them, Don't you hear? Don't you hear? Verily, simple living is part of faith. Simple living is part of faith. So the du'as cannot be just to ask for palaces and feasts. No. Why are we asking that anyway? We're asking that because we turn on that shaitan box, the television, and it's entering into our minds and our hearts, and that's what we see. Every day, that's what we see that we need in this life to make us to be happy. And we think that it is important in this life to grant that. That is a sign that Allah is loving us, following the Jews and the Christians. The dua, it is a grant that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to the believers. That they can ask for. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to hear the dua. That is why the Holy Prophet is saying, Verily, your Lord is generous and shy. If his servant raises his hands to him in dua, he becomes shy to return them empty. Asking for dua, it renews the relationship between us and Allah. For us to remember that Allah is our master and we are servants. So it is important here to understand that the dua, it is to connect ourselves with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to connect, to fix the relationship that we have with Allah, to fix the connection. It is not just to ask. The highest gift, it is a connection to Allah. It is to return to Allah clean. It is to have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say to us on the day of judgment, Come, my obedient servant. Salamun qawla min rabbi rahim. What are we asking in our duas? Are we asking for the owner? Or are we asking for this lowest level of the low that we are living to make our egos to be happy. We have to ask. When we don't ask for help, then there is that connection, it is cut. That is why Holy Prophet says, if somebody does not ask Allah, Allah will get angry with him. We must, we must make dua. And if we are going to make dua, then we must see that our Holy Prophet والسلام, we must see what he was making dua for. He is our role model. Holy Prophet والسلام, he went through the most difficult life and the most difficult situation, but we never see in his life that he was asking for himself or for his family only, or that he was asking for wealth or he was asking for kingdom. He was only asking for one thing throughout his life, and he will ask for one thing on the judgment day. What is that? Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anhu is saying that one day she saw Holy Prophet والسلام, in a good mood. She said to him, Ya Rasulullah, please make dua to Allah for me. So the Prophet said, والسلام, Ya Allah, forgive Aisha her past sins and her future sins. The sins which she has hidden and the sins which have been made open. And she became so happy, she was bowing her head in front of the Prophet until he said, does my dua make you happy? She said, how can your dua not make me happy? And the Prophet said, wallahi, this is the dua I make for my ummah in every prayer. Holy Prophet is saying, Allah has given me one dua. Allah has given one dua to every single prophet and every single messenger that he has guaranteed that he will respond. And every single prophet has used up this dua for himself in this world, except for me. I have saved it 
and I have not used it, and I will not use it in this life. I have kept it for my Ummah, and I will use it for them on the Day of Judgment. And my dua will be, Ya Allah, forgive my entire nation. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi. Believers, we must be praying for each other. We must be praying for the Ummah. Because this Ummah, this brotherhood, it is the only true bond and the only real family. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, only the believers are brothers. So make peace between your brothers and fear Allah that you may receive mercy. Sadaqallah al And when the believers, the brothers are praying for each other, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends them divine support. Praying for each other meaning being concerned for each other. Looking what the other one needs. Worrying about each other. Lifting the other one's worries and burdens. Not complaining about each other all the time. Not looking down to each other all the time. Not making fun to each other, but helping. Yeah, at that time, the believers, they become pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why the Holy Prophet is saying, the dua of a Muslim for his brother in his absence will certainly be answered. Every time he makes a dua for good for his brother, the angel appointed for this particular task says, Amin, may it be for you as well. There was a time when the believers, they were caring and they were worrying for each other. And it was at a time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and support was descending on the believers. It's not like today, when people are saying there is no such thing as a pan-Islamic ummah. We just need to worry about our own local community. When people are saying, why should I worry about the Muslims in Palestine, in Chechnya, in Burma, in Kashmir, in Angola, in China. When people are saying, brother, it is too depressing to think like this. Just worry about yourself. No. There were those before us who were like the Holy Prophet ﷺ. They were caring and they were worrying about the Ummah. And when they cannot change anything with their hands, they try to change it with their tongue. When they cannot change anything with their tongue, they try to make a good dua. Listen to the dua of Sultan Murad II when he was keeping the crusaders out of the lands of Islam. When the tide of the battle was against the believers and the cowards were running away from the Maidan, Sultan Murad Makan, looked to the skies and said, Ya Allah, give strength to the religion of Islam and give victory and help to the religion of Islam for the holiness of the light of Muhammad for the sake of the light of Muhammad Mustafa والسلام, who is the most honored of creation for the religion of the true light of Islam for the Nur Muhammad and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered his sincere dua and gave help to the Muslims. Today, so many people will say, we are making dua, but it is not being answered. We are asking Allah for help, but the help is not coming. Why is that? The awliya Allah are telling us why. The people of Basra once asked the same question to Hazrat Ibrahim ibn Adam, asking why their dua was not accepted. He said, O oh, people of Basra, your hearts have died in respect to ten things. First, you know Allah, but you do not give him his rights. Second, you have read Allah's book, but you do not act by it. Third, you claim to love Allah's messenger, yet you abandon his sunnah. Fourth, you claim to be enemies to shaitan, but you give in to his filthy ways. Fifth, 
You say you love paradise, but you don't work for it. Six, you say you fear the fire, yet you put yourselves closer to it by committing disobedient acts. Seven, you say death is true, but you do not prepare for it. Eight, you busy yourself with the faults of others and ignore your own. Nine, you consume the favors of your Lord, but are not grateful for them. And ten, you bury your dead, but you take no lesson from them. That reality is continuing today. This was during the time of the Tabi'in. We are more than 1,000 years away from the time of the Tabi'in. Do you think now there is only 10 reasons why our dua is not accepted? There must be thousands. This Ramadan, this month of the Ummah, it is a chance for us to break the chains of our ego and shaitan and to fix our connection to our Lord. O oh, believers, we have to wake up and we have to be part of the work of helping the Ummah. We cannot be selfish ones who are not caring. Our Shaykh is saying, we don't know what will happen by tomorrow. So many people last night, they made plans to get up this morning, but they didn't make it. They didn't. So many people got up this morning, but they are making plans for tonight, but they are not going to make it. That can be us. And it's happening in our community every day too. We are not aware of it, but it's happening. It's happening to someone, somewhere, somehow. But we are too disconnected from each other too. Sitting next to each other, but we are too disconnected. We are not knowing anything about our own selves and about the ones who are sitting next to us. Is that the way of the Muslims, how they live? No. Holy Prophet is ordering us, saying, the nation, this ummah, is just like a body, one body. When one part of that body is hurting, the whole body is feeling the pain. Yes, that's the way we are supposed to be. When one believer is hurting, when one believer is in trouble, the whole body must be feeling that pain. We are too far away from it too. Today's people, today's Muslims lost that feeling. They lost that feeling because they lost the main road and everyone is busy. Dunya, dunya and dunya and nothing else. Oh believers, this Ummat, this Ummat it is hurting. And it is in pain. Knowing how much the Holy Prophet loves this Ummah, he is hurting and he is in pain. And Allah will not love the things that hurts his Prophet. The believers must feel this pain. The believers must put in their hearts that they themselves to begin will lift this pain from themselves and lift the pain that they're causing to other people first. And we're asking that Allah send the one who is going to fix the problems of this world soon. Hazrat Mahdi alayhi salam and all those ones who are going to lift the pain and the oppression and the injustice in this world because nothing will change until that Savior comes. We must look, we must make that dua, especially this month, that we're asking Allah to bring down the Dajjalic systems, to bring down all the shaitanic systems, and to bring down all the Zalim people, and to take out Zulm from our hearts, and to bring Mahdi alayhi salam soon, inshallah. We're asking Allah to forgive us, we're asking Allah to have mercy on us, we're asking Allah to put love and feeling back into our hearts. We're asking Allah to make our hearts be alive for the sake of the Holy Prophet.
ভাই ভাই নামাজ মানে সুবন কুদুস আলী কামদেশ <laughs> <laughs> 